Hello everyone, happy Tuesday and happy So What Day. I hope that you are having a great start to your week. Uh, my kids started school this morning, so... Wow. Yay! <laughs> no, I'm really happy for them and for myself. Um, at any rate, I'm excited that you are here with me today because um, with the start of school means it's also the start of all kinds of sports, right? You know, when the kids go off to school, it's like all of a sudden everybody's schedule is crazy with all the activities and, you know, the carpooling and getting everybody where they need to go. And football starts, soccer starts, all the fall sports that, you know, we've got to get to and cheer the kids on. So I thought it would be a great time to talk about some sort of ex accessories for all of these sporting events and personalizing those things with our sewing talents and with machine embroidery specifically. But we could also do things with applique and quilting and all of those good things as well, of course. Um, also, I was pleasantly surprised to learn that August is National Golf Month. Do we have any golfers out there? How many of you out there play golf, even if it's mini golf, right? Um, I dabble in a little golfing. Um, but anyway, I thought that was um, kind of fun. You know, there's a national month for everything, it seems, a national day for everything. So, you know, why not celebrate it? And we've got some great new blanks at sulky.com, one of which is a golf towel. Um, I believe it's called a golf towel on the website, but it can actually be used for a lot of different sports. Um, the great thing about this towel blank is it has a really heavy duty grommet on it and a little clip. And you can clip that towel to your golf bag, your sports bag, whether you play pickleball, tennis, soccer, what have you. We all need a bag with our stuff in it. So these towels are really fun to personalize with machine embroidery, applique, as I mentioned. And actually what I'm going to show you today is a machine embroidery design that has applique included, um, but it's done in the hoop. And I just realized I actually didn't even grab the towel that I made. I have lots of pictures of it though, um, but I think it's right next to me here. Um, so bear with me, I'll find it. Um, at any rate, lots of you coming in and saying hello, be sure to comment and like the Sulky Facebook page if you're watching on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching on YouTube because as long as you do those things and you are engaging with the post today, giving me those great emojis, um, I'll even take the bad ones. You know, I guess they're not bad. They're just different emotions. We're okay with that. Um, at any rate, as long as you're commenting and engaging with me here today and you've liked or subscribed to our pages, then you are eligible to win today's gift from Sulky, which is a pack of Sulky Solvi. Solvi is the original water-soluble stabilizer by Sulky, and it has um, a film-like feel to it. You can see right through it, and we're going to be talking a lot about Solvi today because it really is the answer to embroidering on towels of all kinds. Um, as you know, most towels have a nap to them, meaning they have um, plush fibers or, um, you know, especially terry cloth loops, things like that on towels. And we need to sort of manage that nap when we're adding stitches to it so that the thread doesn't sink into the towel and then the nap kind of gets brushed over the top and you can't even see all of that work you put into the towel. So Solvi helps those threads sit on top of the fabric surface. They're still permanent on there, but it manages the nap for the embroidery. So we're gonna be talking about that today as well. Sharon says, I flunked at mini golf. <laughs> 
Well, you can always keep trying. And like I said, the towels we're going to showcase today, you can use for lots of different sports. You can give them away as gifts. I love grabbing up a bunch of blanks and then personalizing them for all the recipients. If I have a group gift to give, for example, for a bunch of teachers on the first day of school or throughout the school year, for a sports team, um, things like that. If you have a group of friends that gets together and plays cards or hangs out for girls' night or guys' night, it's a great idea to grab up a bunch of the same blank and then use different designs to personalize those for each recipient. It makes it so much easier on you. And then they all get sort of the same thing, but they feel special like you really paid attention to, you know, whether it's their favorite sports team on there or a monogram for them. Um, you know, they know it was handmade and that it was made specifically for them. All right. So before we get into our towel demo today, I want to make sure everybody is aware that we have upcoming on our education site, which is sewingonline.sulky.com, our creative rope baskets embroidery sewing session. This is going to be a bit available for on-demand viewing on September 12th. And you can start registering now. You can grab your kit now so that it's on the way to you so that when all of the videos are available for viewing, you will have everything that you need right there in front of you to create your own fantastic rope basket. Now, rope baskets have been being made on sewing machines for so long. It's It kind of started out as those um, rope or cording rugs, right? That we all covered in fabric strips and then we made our own rugs. It was a great way to use up all of those little fabric bits that we can't part with, but you know, there's really nothing we can do with them as far as like a full project goes. The great idea about wrapping the cording with fabric is that your fabric doesn't have to match. It doesn't even need to coordinate. You can barely discern the fabric motifs once it's wrapped around the cording. So it's a really great way to use up those fabric scraps. Well, then we started tilting up the sides of the uh, of the rugs and making them into baskets. So you can create a basket that doesn't have fabric wrapping on it. You can add some fabric wrapping, just details here and there. You can do the whole basket wrapped in fabric. You can add all different kinds of handles. I really experimented with these baskets and came up with all different kinds of handle variations. So you can really take a basic rope basket, maybe you've already made one before, and then you can really turn it into a designer original. First off, we're adding machine embroidery. We can embroider directly through that rope with all the techniques and tips and tricks I'm going to give you throughout this embroidery sewing session. Plus, this design that you see here, I'm going to make it bigger so you can see it. This design is an exclusive, brand new design from Embroidery Library and Urban Threads. When you register for the embroidery sewing session, you will receive this design in two sizes. If you only have a four by four hoop, you'll have a four by four design. If you wanna make a larger basket, you will need a six by 10 hoop for the larger design. So you will get it in two sizes. And isn't it adorable? It's this really cute sewing theme wreath of sorts. And it's specifically digitized so that you can sew right through the rope. It's not dense. It has um, it's has sort of a sketchy quality to it. And so when the session begins on September 12th, and it's not a live event, I wanna make sure everybody knows, it's an on-demand course where you get to decide when and how and all of these things, you can guide yourself through the course at your own pace. All right, so on September 12th, all the videos will be available. There are 11 
videos because there's so many different variations so that you can decide what type of basket you want to create. I highly suggest when the videos all go live, peruse all of the lessons before you start making your basket so that you can decide which handles you want, which finish you want. Do you want a base to it? Do you want feet added? All of these different things before you get started. So I just have sort of a smattering of <laughs> baskets that I made while I was creating the course um, with the help of Embroidery Library and Urban Threads, of course. Um, and so I'll just give you a little bit of show and tell because I did do it last week as well. Um, but just for those of you who didn't tune in last week, I want you to see all the different kinds of baskets you can create once you watch the embroidery sewing session. We're really excited about this one. Um, it's been a long time coming because this rope basket trend is really going strong still. And I love the fact that we can embroider directly through the rope. It really makes this look, um, you know, store-bought. Honestly, I mean, it, it, it's, it just looks designery, I guess is a better word. All right, so here is a smaller little rope basket that I made. And you can see it's got a little bit of fabric wrapping to it, just a couple of uh, rows of rope. And I walk you through the whole process of how to do that effectively so the rope doesn't slip. Um, and so it looks really cool and almost kind of boho-y with a little bit of raw edges. And then I added a fabric insert to this one, and it's actually some faux leather fabric. When you purchase up your rope basket kit, you will get 100 feet of the best rope to use for embroidery, which will give you enough to make pretty much a basket of this size and then a basket of, let's say, this size. So you can make two depending on how big of a basket you want, okay? Or you could make one huge basket. You'll also get a piece of really beautiful hazelnut faux leather fabric. And you can use this in a bunch of different ways. You can use it for a fabric insert that also has embroidery. You can use it for different types of handles. You can use it for a base for your basket, which is really nice because that covers your embroidery stitches and uh, creates sort of a barrier between the backside of your embroidery and whatever surface you are putting it on. It also just gives it, again, a nice designer finished touch and look to it. So with your uh, hazelnut faux leather uh, fabric, which comes from Sally Tomato, it's part of the kit, You'll also get a few rivets. These are in a gunmetal finish, which is really just a beautiful finish. It's like a dark, um, well, it's this color. <laughs> you can use those to attach handles, different types of handles. As I mentioned, there's several. Um, this is another type of handle you can create as well. And they're attached with these rivets. So, a really nice, you know, finishing touch. And like I said, fabric insert or base. You'll also get the stabilizer you need to uh, embroider your rope basket, which is Sulky Ultra Solvy. I'm also gonna be talking about that today with our towels. Okay, so here's another basket I made that's a little bit um, uh, shorter. Uh, with a little bit wider of a base, and it has that cork fabric bottom, which is just a different variation. And then I also have this really big bowl with a little bit different finish to it. I've gone crazy with the rope baskets, and you will too. It's They're really, really fun to make um, and super useful. Um, let's see, I showed you all those. This is a different size basket. There's an entire video on how to create an oval shaped basket if you want something a little bit different. Now this design is not included with purchase of the session. You will get the uh, 
sewing themed design with purchase, but um, just a different way. This I call this one like the banana boat, right? And then it has some different handle treatments. So I go over that as well um, and a different little finishing option. This would be a cute little bread basket or something in the middle of your table or on a shelf to display. And then of course you can also create little coasters. You can create placemats or centerpieces. This would look really pretty with a little, uh, with your tool caddy in the center of it in your sewing room or just with a little vase of flowers in the center. So lots and lots of different options. You will learn them all throughout the course. And I'm just so excited for you all to take the course because let me just tell you, I have been working on these videos <laughs> for months. <laughs> so I'm really just excited for you all to experience it. Ooh, I also did the design on a piece of Sulky Felty, which is another option for a fabric insert. So if you're a little bit nervous about embroidering on the rope, you can try the design out on some felty or cork fabric or the faux leather that you receive with your kit. And then you can insert it into the basket that either you've made or maybe you have a purchased basket, right? That's made out of clothesline or rope or what have you. They're super popular at Target, especially with all the back to school stuff I've been seeing them. They make really um, great little baskets for planters and things like this. You could add, if you had a hanging planter basket, you can embroider your cute little design and then add it to the bottom of that. So when, you're, uh, when your plant is hanging, you see a cute little design on the other side. So, so many different things you can do and really, you know, take this uh, to many different heights, right? <laughs> Depending on where you wanna place your basket and what you wanna do with it. So that will be available for viewing on September 12th, but you'll need to register, reserve your spot, grab up your kit. It's at an amazing price right now. It's only $39.99, which I believe is about $20 off of the retail price. And that price will be good until supplies last or until September 30th, whichever comes first. So if you want to grab up a rope basket, be sure to do so soon because once they're gone, they're gone. We have a limited supply of these uh, because we had to source so many different products uh, to put this kit together for you. All right, so embroidered ro rope baskets, I hope you will join. And also if you don't have an embroidery machine, there's lots of different variations for really cool rope baskets with or without the embroidery. Um, but the embroidery design is just a really nice bonus once you purchase up that session, you'll know that on September 12th, you'll get those really cute designs to add to your embroidery design file on your computer and to add to your rope baskets in a lot of different ways. All right, so without further ado, let's talk about our towels. Embroidering on towels seems to be the number one thing people ask about at sulky.com and on our YouTube videos. They are still the most popular videos every time we do a video on embroidering towels. So if you have questions about embroidering specific towels or just questions as I go along here, be sure to put them in the live chat so we can all learn from each other. And I will give you my best answers because I've been embroidering towels probably for 15 years now, if not more. And I've used every kind of sulky stabilizer on so many different kinds of towels just to see if my recipe still holds true or if there's something better out there. So towels make great gifts, as I mentioned before. Lots of people like to monogram towels. If you have kids headed off to college this year or grandkids or nieces and nephews, it's a really great gift to give them a big bath sheet, a bath towel, a washcloth, and then embroider either a big monogram or some initials on the side of the towel so that they don't get lost in the shuffle, right? And they know which ones are theirs and they have a nice set of good towels when they leave the nest. 
Um, you know, I got a set like that. I've gifted it to one of my cousins in the past. And uh, I think she still has them, actually. <laughs> and it's been years and years. Um, so some good quality towels. You know, that gift never goes out of style. Um, also, again, towels for sports. Whether you have kids starting soccer this fall, like I do, basketball's coming up in the winter, we've still got baseball going on. It's a fun gift also to give to their coach as well as kind of a memento of that team. You can put that team name on, maybe a little motif of the sport, and they can clip it onto their towel or to their sports bag, whether it's a golf bag, tennis bag, what have you. All right. So let me just show you the uh, golf towel that I made. I'm going to make this real big. And while I have it big on the screen, I'm going to go look for the real thing. So these golf towels are available at sulky.com in lots of different colors. Okay. And whoo. All right, I actually found it. You guys, I, uh, you know, <laughs> so much going on in this sewing room. It is a madhouse most of the time. All right, so here's my golf towel. I had the black towel, but there's all, so many colors. Let me just pull it up here so I can make sure. I know it comes in red because I've got a picture of that one. I just want to show you the nice little heavy duty grommet on there, and the little clip. Um, these are on sale until August 22nd as well. So the retail price is $12.99, but right now they're only $9.74. So you're saving a lot of money on these and can grab them up um, to have on hand, maybe to gift for the holidays coming up. Or again, as your kids or grandkids, what have you, start sports this fall. So it comes in white, black, red, gray, pink, and light blue. So that covers a lot of the sports team's colors that uh, you might want to embroider. And, you know, I went with a golf design because really this kind of clip is really perfect for a golf bag. Really heavy duty and, you know, stays with the towel and you can even wash it this way. Um, or, you know, of course, take this little clip out so it doesn't uh, scratch up the inside of your washer or dryer. But I tested this and washed it in my washing machine and everything was great. The color didn't bleed on anything else. Um, so, a great way to remove our stabilizer when we're all done as well. But before we get to that, um, the design that I chose for my towel is uh, from uh, embroidery.com, OESD. I put the link for this particular design in the description of today's post. You'll also see a link for the golf towels, all the stabilizer, the needles and thread that I used, Everything is in the description of today's post. Also, the registration link and the kit link for our rope basket session is in there as well. So if you're not seeing that, make sure to hit the see more button on the side of the description uh, below uh, my video stream here. And then the whole description will pop out and you'll find those links. All right. So this design is an applique design. So the whole part of the golf ball here, I actually added a piece of white faux leather vinyl, all right? So I was a little apprehensive adding that sort of heavyweight material to our nice plush towel. You see how nice and plushy that is? It's super duper soft. Um, but at any rate, I was a little apprehensive adding that to this plushy towel. But as you can see, it worked out perfectly. Um, it is a little bit stiffer, of course, right here. But for a golf towel, a sports towel, I think that's okay. Plus, the towel is large enough that there's plenty of other room on the towel 
obviously you wouldn't be, you know, wiping off your golf club or your face or what have you with that faux leather part. But just be aware that that's what I did. It's more of a, you know, decorative accent that you would just steer clear of as you're using the towel. Um, you could also use a piece of knit fabric and stabilize it really well uh, with some fusible cutaway stabilizer, like a totally stable would work there as well. Um, a Even a soft and sheer extra if you're using a piece of knit fabric. Or you could use a piece of quilting cotton because all of the edges are going to be concealed with all of these great thick satin stitches. All right, so you don't need to use a no fray fabric, um, but if you do want something that moves a little bit better with the towel, I would go with um, probably a medium weight, stable, more stable knit fabric, um, and then just use a fusible cutaway stabilizer on it. And that way when you add it to the towel during the embroidery process, it won't stretch out of shape um, and it'll, you know, kind of stay a little bit more stable when someone's using the towel. But at any rate, this white vinyl fabric had kind of a mottled, uh, you know, texture to it. And it just looked exactly like a golf ball. So that's why I went with that type of fabric and I had a piece of it in my stash. So it was perfect for this project. You can, of course, use so many different designs, sports theme designs, monograms, you know, all these different motifs that I mentioned earlier. Um, but, you know, I thought this obviously was so, so perfect. So after you choose the design that you want to use for your towel, it's time for stabilizer. And as I mentioned, I have used so many different wash away stabilizers even tried tear away stabilizers on towels. Um, I've tried sticky back stabilizers on towels, honestly, as just experiments for my own education so that I can pass that knowledge on to all of you. So my best, um, you know, technique for this type of really plushy, almost velvety um, type of towel, this one is made, let's see. It's 100% cotton. So it's 100% cotton, but it feels super velvety. All right, that's the really only way I can describe it right now. For this type of towel, I used Sulky Ultra Solvy underneath on in the hoop, and then Sulky Original Solvy, Sulky Solvy on top. Sulky Salvi is our giveaway today for one lucky viewer who is watching, commenting, sharing out the post, all of those good things. So that's what we're going to use as our topper. And I used Ultra Salvi underneath. Ultra Salvi is like four times as thick as the original Salvi. It's what we use for freestanding lace um, where we have no fabric to support the stitches for the design. The Ultra Solvi acts as that fabric until we wash it away. The reason I use the Ultra Solvi is because it's going to wash away completely once the embroidery is finished, but it was thick enough to support the towel during the stitch out process. I've also done a towel like this on Sulky Fabra Solvi and Sulky Sticky Fabra Solvi. And you know what? Those work pretty well. It's just they're much thinner than the Ultra Solvi. And I wanted to match the thickness of my towel a little bit more with the stabilizer that I chose. And it worked out so great that that's what I am passing on to you. So in the pictures I'm going to show you, I used a magnetic hoop. And we have them available at sulky.com for lots of different machines, makes, and model. You'll plug in the sewing machine brand that you have, the model that you have, and then it will tell you on the website what hoop sizes are available to you for those for that make and model. So you'll know if the hoop is compatible with your sewing, with your sewing and embroidery machine. The awesome thing about these hoops is as soon as you put them on your embroidery module, the machine recognizes them, 
just as it does your standard hoops. So you don't have to program anything or tell it anything other than the size of hoop that's on there. It'll actually recognize all of that. So it'll act just as though you were putting on a standard uh, hoop. Now, using a magnetic hoop for towels is so awesome because the magnets just come together with your stabilizer towel sandwich in between. And you don't get any hoop burn because you're not pushing the inner hoop inside of the outer hoop to secure it. If we had a standard hoop, we could not put this towel in the hoop. It's too plush. It would not be secure enough in the hoop for embroidery. And your uh, towel would suffer from what we call hoop burn. That means that the inner hoop sort of burns those fibers. And uh, a lot of the times it's irrecoverable. Okay, we can't get those lines of the hoop out. They've been burnt into the fibers. Um, so since we don't want hoop burn, since we want our towel to be secure in the hoop for embroidery, if you're using a standard hoop, you will first hoop only the Ultra Solvy stabilizer. And then the cool thing about using Ultra Solvy is that you can spray it with water and then lay your towel over the top and it will stick to it and it will not move at all during the embroidery process. You can also use some KK2000 temporary spray adhesive and spray the Ultra Solvy and then place your towel in the hoop centering where you want your design to be using those inner hoop cross marks. Now I mention this a lot and I'm looking for a standard hoop. I'm going to have to grab one over here. I mentioned this a lot, but I just want to drive it on home that if you are using a standard hoop rather than a magnetic hoop, you want to make sure that your inner hoop is oriented so that you can read the numbers and probably the brand of your hoop. I know all hoops are different. This goes with my machine. Make sure you're reading everything right side up. If you go to hoop your stabilizer and the numbers are upside down or the label or what have you is upside down, that means your inner hoop, first of all, it, it may not even fit that way, but a lot of them will, especially if you force it, right? Um, and a lot of the times when our fabric is, you know, over the outer hoop or our stabilizer, we can't really tell if it's fitting in there properly. So notice how when my hoop's upside down, my center cross marks going horizontal are up here. When my hoop's right side up and I can read everything properly, look where those center cross marks are. Very important that it's right side up uh, because otherwise when you go to put your towel in here, and you're using these markings as a guide for centering, you know, where you want your design. If this is upside down, these markings are going to be way up here. And your design is not going to be where you want it on the towel. There's some other, you know, safeguards we will do as well to make sure that we have perfect placement. But that's really number one is making sure that your hoop is right side, you know, right side up um, or facing you properly so you can read it. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So we've got our Ultra Solvy in the standard hoop. We've either sprayed it with water or sprayed it with KK2000. And then place your towel over the top of that stabilizer to stick it in place. Okay. Then you need to add your Sulky Solvy topper. Before we place the topper, you're going to kind of brush the towel, making sure that the nap or the little fuzzies that stick up from the towel are all facing the same direction. You don't want it to get in there and some of the naps going one way and the other, because then it's going to be permanent that way once you stitch over the top. So kind of brush it down and then you can add some KK2000 to your Solvi 
place it over the top of the towel. Now we've sandwiched the towel between a layer of ultra solvy and a layer of solvy. It's in there nice and tight and you can place your hoop onto the machine. All right, so we've covered the standard hoop and now I will show it to you on the magnetic hoop. So on the magnetic hoop, I've actually placed my magnetic hoop on my flat work surface and I have my ultra solvy over the magnetic hoop and then I have my towel over the ultra solvy. Again, either spraying it with water to make sure that those don't shift or KK2000. Now I'm gonna add my sulky solvy topper. So I spray, this is, you know, I'm spraying the regular solvy and then I'm gonna put it spray side down over the top of the towel. And it's important that you spray the solvy rather than spraying your towel because if you spray the solvy, once you wash it away, the KK2000 gets washed away with the stabilizer. If you spray your towel and then place the solvy, it's just a little bit harder to remove the KK2000 once your embroidery is complete. If you go ahead and wash your towel afterwards, it'll be gone. But if you just rinse it away, you might find a little bit of residue left over um, if you spray the towel versus spraying the solvy. So now I'm going to mark my embroidery placement on the solvy because that's also going to wash away once my towel is embroidered. I'm just using a chalk pencil here to mark the desired embroidery center. So I mark my vertical and horizontal um, axis lines for my design. And now I can place the top of my magnetic hoop, centering those lines along the markings of my inner hoop. So you can see when you have a magnetic hoop, how taut and nice everything is in that sandwich. Isn't that great? I mean, magnetic hoops are just the best things for things like towel embroidery, denim embroidery, um, using embroidery designs or quilting in the hoop of your embroidery machine. Um, someone's saying, how big is that hoop? I believe it is my uh, 260 by 200 hoop that I'm using here. Also, if you have an edging on the towel, which I do here, you'll want to be um, aware of that. So this towel has this edge treatment, right? Another reason why, you know, we can't get that in a standard hoop and we wouldn't want to. But when you have a magnetic hoop, you could put your magnets right around or on this edging and it's still gonna hold it nice and taut and flat. So these are just really, really great. I can't say enough great things about them. So now that we have our design centered, I'm still gonna triple check that my design is going to sew out in the right place. Now, especially with pre-made items and blanks, you want to do as many placement checks as you possibly can. Even if you have one of the little snowman stickers, if your machine brand has those, or Target stickers, or if you use um, the sulky embroidery stickers, um, I have some of those as well, placement stickers. This is a PDF that's available on our website and you can print it out onto a sheet of sulky stick and stitch or sulky sticky Fabrisolvi and create your own target placement stickers. Pretty great. Even if you have those and you've placed them on top of the Solvi that you have on your hoop or in your hoop, depending on the hoop that you have, you still want to triple check your embroidery placement. So the first thing I do is I put my needle to the center position. A lot of the times once you've down or once you've loaded your design into the machine, um, your machine will go to the starting stitch rather than the center point. So I always put my uh, needle in the center point, use the hand wheel to double check that that needle is going right into the center of my uh, axis marks. 
Then you can also, um, on some machine models, you can direct the needle to go to the four corner points of your design as well and double check that that is not, you know, tilted or skewed in any way. You can also use embroidery templates. There's so many different placement aids out there. I highly suggest you use what you're most comfortable with, but if you're new to machine embroidery, definitely consult your embroidery manual to see all of the different options you have for double and triple checking your embroidery placement. All right, so once I have done that, I'm then going to direct my machine to add a perimeter basting stitch to my design. This is just my, I guess, quadruple check at this point that my this is the perimeter of my design. This is where it's going to sew out. Um, you know, this is definitely more important when you're doing something like a monogram or a directional design. If you're new to embroidery, maybe you want to pick a design that is a little bit more fluid. You know, it doesn't have a certain direction to it. Maybe it's, you know, a swirly design with paisleys or something like that. And that way, if your design is just a little askew or just a little off center, it's not going to be noticeable at all. So the other function of this basting stitch is it's going to ensure that my layers, either in the hoop, if using a magnetic hoop, or on top of the hoop, if using a standard hoop, that my layers are all nice and sandwiched together for the stitch out. So this is just another way of making sure that that sandwich is nice and tight and together. So after doing our perimeter basting, you can take this off of the machine if you want, do not take it out of the hoop, and just give it a look, measure a little bit, make sure everything is how you want it because you can always uh, remove the basting stitches and start again if you need to. Then we're going to start our stitch out. So in my particular design, I mentioned I was adding an applique fabric to it. And since I used this faux leather vinyl piece, I didn't want to put that over the top of the Solvi. See, over the top of the Solvi topper. Um, just because, you know, you shouldn't really be saturating this type of fabric with a whole bunch of water. I definitely washed this to test it all and it worked great, but I didn't want to have any of that Solvi trapped underneath of this vinyl piece. You may feel the same way if you're adding, let's say, a heavier weight knit fabric to the top as a bit of a topper. You could even use like a piece of white terry cloth, um, you know, toweling or uh, even like a washcloth or something and use that as your golf ball or that would make a cute soccer ball or even a baseball type of motif. So what I did just to make sure that I didn't have that solvy over the top was I just removed it right where that applique was going to go. And there were already perimeter stitches there, so it was a little bit perforated, and I could just lift up the solvy and tear it away right inside of where my applique was going to go. So if you're doing an applique, you don't necessarily need that topper anymore because the fabric applique is then going to act as your topper. So you can perform the first applique stitch, which is usually the placement stitches for your applique fabric, then remove that bit of topper and place your applique fabric and then continue with the design. All right, so now I have my little textured piece of uh, vinyl or faux leather in place and I have performed the tacking stitches which is typically the second part of an applique design. So first you have the placement stitches, then you, you know where to place your fabric, then you'll do the tacking stitches, and then you'll trim the excess fabric just beyond the tacking stitch edge. And I've gotten really close here with the help of applique scissors. 
I like to use the little duck bill type applique scissors. We have these at sulky.com. If you do a lot of machine embroidery and you want to add, you know, different machine embroidery techniques like applique in the hoop, I highly suggest grabbing up these scissors because this little, they call it a duck bill, fits right underneath your fabric edge, allowing you to cut very closely up to the tacking stitch edge without slicing through it. And then it has a really uh, sharp point to it so you can get into little corners and crevices and things like that as well and kind of snip into those without slicing through uh, your, your tacking stitches. Now, a lot of the times, there's then a third step to the applique, which is the finishing stitch. And a lot of the times that's like a satin stitch or decorative stitch edge. So if you do happen to accidentally slice through those tacking stitches, a lot of the times it won't matter too much because the next step or sometimes the final step in the design is to sew the finishing stitch that covers the entire edge of the um, raw edge of that fabric. All right, so now you can see my design is totally finished now. I have still have my perimeter stitches and then my entire applique is complete and the whole design is done. So now, oh, I think this is just showing a different angle of the design so you can see the little texture in that white a uh, uh, faux leather or vinyl fabric piece. So now we're gonna take everything out of the hoop. If you're using a magnetic hoop, you'll just separate your two magnets and here is your towel, right? We've got our solvy over the top, our ultra solvy on the back. If you're using a standard hoop, you'll pop the ultra solvy out of the hoop and now we can deal with removing that stabilizer. So first, I remove the topper. And the great thing about this design is um, even though it is pretty stitch heavy, it doesn't have a lot of fill stitches. And I think that's really important when you're embroidering um, a super plush towel, especially. Um, you know, monograms oftentimes have a lot of heavy fit, fit, fill stitches to them. Um, which is fine and they work well, but they are gonna change the hand of the towel a little bit. Like I mentioned, my faux leather piece makes that area of the towel pretty, you know, what they call bulletproof, right? It changes the hand, makes it a little um, harder. But, you know, with a towel adding a monogram, you just wanna make sure there's enough open areas so that you can still use the towel effectively and things like that. So. I just remove as much of the solvy topper as I can by tearing it away along the outer perimeter. Anything that's left inside of the sketchy bits of the design, I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see what I mean about sketchy bits. You can see there's a lot of color involved, but it's a lot of straight stitches overlapping one another. So there's a lot of solvy bits in between all of those stitches. We're gonna leave those intact and we're going to remove those with water. But the majority of it, you can remove by tearing away. And anything you can't tear away, maybe it wasn't perforated by the needle very much, um, you can either just trim close to the stitches or you can leave it intact. And again, we're gonna wash it all away. Now we need to remove our stabilizer from the back of the embroidery. Now, I love this picture because it shows um, a mistake that I made in the project. Um, I'm just, I'm embroidering so many things all at once. I had embroidery thread in my machine and I just started the design and went with it. Not realizing or thinking, it didn't even occur to me, that my bobbin thread was white and I'm embroidering on a black towel. Why didn't I switch my bobbin thread to black? It would have been almost indetectable from the wrong side that there was any design there at all. So 
Think about those things. If you are embroidering, let's say, that red towel, grab up a spool of sulky 60 weight poly light in a red color that coordinates with your towel. That way, your bobbin thread isn't even going to show when the towel is hanging or being used. Because like, you know, with any blank or pre-made item, we can't always add a lining to these things. So you're going to see the wrong side of the embroidery design. So think about those things because my towel has all white bobbin thread on the wrong side. It's not a deal breaker, it's okay, but I really wish in hindsight that I had the foresight <laughs> to think about matching my bobbin thread to the towel. All right, um, and I also forgot to talk about the top thread that I'm using for the towel. Things like towels that are going to get washed a lot, that you might want to bleach, um, that are going to be out in the sun, like a golf towel might be. You'll want to choose Sulky Poly Deco. Poly Deco thread is a 40 weight polyester thread, and it's going to take to those harsher elements a lot better than Sulky Rayon thread might. Okay? Usually, I would say rayon thread and poly deco thread are pretty interchangeable as far as machine embroidery goes. But for these outdoor things, for toweling, again, things that are going to be washed really frequently, I always go to poly deco so that it's a polyester thread that can withstand all of those things and all of those elements. All right. So poly deco on the top. A 60 weight bobbin thread in the bobbin, either sulky bobbin thread, which comes in white, black, and then pre-wounds of a few other neutral colors, or 60 weight poly light thread in the bobbin that matches your towel. Okay. Oh, and this is the Ultra Solvi on the wrong side of our towel. An Ultra Solvi is too thick to tear away like we did the topper, right? The original Solvi on top. And if you try to start tearing it away, it could kind of loosen some of those stitches because it, Ultra Solvi is just really thick. So instead, we're going to trim uh, the stabilizer away beyond the embroidery perimeter. And now the only thing that's left to do is remove the rest of our stabilizer using water. So I, you know, really recommend using running water that's running away from the project, not pooling on top of it, but, you know, flowing away from the project. And I start with the Solvi on top because that is thinner than the Ultra Solvi and it's going to come away first. And I love to use my kitchen wand. If you have a kitchen wand or a shower wand, um, I feel like, well, at least with mine, the water pressure is better. And you can kind of agitate it a little bit by moving it around over the top of the embroidery, uh, making those little bits of solvy, solvy fibers just dissolve and run off of the project. Then you can turn it around and remove the ultra solvy in the same way. Ultra solvy is going to take a little bit longer to dissolve than the original solvy. You might also want to put it in the washing machine on a rinse and spin cycle. I love doing that because it really just ensures everything is totally gone and out of the towel. Um, once you do that, you can wash it on a regular cycle with some, you know, soap, what have you, with some other towels, and it's good to go. You can gift it away, um, use it your own self, all kinds of things. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and address some of the comments, and then I have another sports-themed inspiration to share with you as well. Um, Jeannie says, do you use cold water or warm? Great question. I use warm water. You can use cold water, but it's going to take a little bit longer. Warm water just helps it dissolve a little bit better. All right. Erlene says, in the bobbin, I always use the color of the top thread. That is another great idea when you're doing a towel or something where you're going to see the wrong side of the embroidery, because then the back looks just as pretty as the front. All right. 
Great to know the difference between polydeco and rayon. Leslie says, what's the usual weight of bobbin thread? So at Sulky, our bobbin thread is 60 weight. And typically you want a little bit lighter weight thread uh, in the bobbin than you use on the top. So that's why in the top we use a 40 weight thread um, when the design calls for 40 weight and a 60 weight thread in the bobbin. So 60 weight is finer than 40 weight. And, you know, I talk a lot about balanced stitches. You want to make sure your stitches are balanced. So, you know, in regular sewing, a balanced stitch is where on the top of your fabric, the right side, you see no bobbin thread. On the back of your fabric, you see no top thread. That's how you know you have a balanced stitch. The little interlock between those two threads kind of disappears into the fabric. That's a completely balanced stitch when you are doing regular sewing. For machine embroidery, a balanced stitch means that you see a little bit of the top thread on the back of the embroidery. So that's how you know it's balanced. And it's a little bit tricky because all our lives when we're doing regular sewing, we are taught that you shouldn't see either one on either side, right? But for machine embroidery, you actually want that upper thread to pull ever so slightly to the wrong side. So having a lighter weight thread in the bobbin helps achieve that balanced stitch. You might notice if you use 40 weight thread in the bobbin, which I do some of the times as well, especially if I want it to look really pretty on the wrong side, like I just mentioned, sometimes you don't get as much of that top thread pulling to the wrong side. You might actually see more bobbin thread pulling toward the top, which if your threads match, it doesn't matter that much, right? It's when they don't that it starts to matter. So I hope that makes a little bit uh, more sense there. All right, do you spray the KK2000 first or mark the crosshairs first? So I, you know, you can do it both ways, actually. Um, for my sample on the golf towel, I sprayed the KK2000, made sure it was stuck and nice and flat, and then I marked my crosshairs hairs on it. If you want to mark the Solvi, it's just a little bit trickier to make sure that your Solvi is in the exact right spot, you know, in the hoop on the towel because you're adding it as a topper last. So, I mean, I would really recommend marking it afterwards, um, but you could try it both ways. You'd have to just get really exact when you add the Solvi after marking it. Okay. How big? Oh, I already answered how big is the hoop. Um, Pat says, where do we buy ultra solvy and a magnetic hoop? So you can get both things at sulky.com. And you'll just want to make sure when you look at the magnetic hoop, there will be two drop down menus. The first one is for the brand of the machine that you have. The second one is for the model of machine that you have. And then it's going to tell you whether or not there's a hoop that's compatible for that machine in the magnetic hoop variety, and if so, what sizes you can choose from. And then you can just add those to your cart. All right, Noreen wants to know if the spray gums up the needle. So for me, I have not had that problem with the KK2000 or with any of our sticky stabilizers, but I will say I use a brand new needle for every project that I start, especially if I am doing machine embroidery on something that has over 20,000 stitches or over, maybe I go a little bit further with that, like 60,000 stitches, that's a lot of needle penetrations. Um, and a lot of the times I'm going through a lot of different layers of things, right? So I always start with a brand new needle. That way, if I have problems with the stitch out, I don't really have the needle to blame. Um, and a lot of the times that's the last thing people will check. They'll say, oh, my thread's breaking. It must be the thread. Oh, you know, my bobbin thread's showing. It must be the tension. They'll change all these things. 
And then lo and behold, they haven't changed their needle in three months. So that's always the first thing that I do if I'm having trouble, change the needle. I always, always start with a new needle. So again, I don't have that to blame. Um, you may even want to check the needle that you're using now. Make sure there's no burrs, nothing rough on it. Sometimes too, if we're doing regular sewing or switching back and forth from machine embroidery to regular sewing, we'll forget to change our needle out. Um, or, you know, a lot of the times if I'm quilting in my uh, sewing machine, I'll move the fabric a little bit too fast if I'm doing free motion quilting and my needle kind of comes with the fabric. And I might think that it has snapped back into place, but for the most part, I've probably bent that needle. Then I go to switch to machine embroidery or something like that. My stitch out is off, my thread's breaking because my needle is ever so slightly bent. So that helps with stickiness and it helps with a lot of troubleshooting. Um, if you do experience any stickiness, maybe, you know, you're using a sticky plus with a, um, you know, KK2000 with a lot, a lot of sticky, you know, things, right? We also have what's called embroidery anti-glue needles. And you can purchase those at sulky.com. They're made by Oregon Needles and they're called anti-glue. And they are specifically made and manufactured so that they're nice and, I guess, slippery for lack of a better word, but they glide through all that sticky stuff and they don't get any buildup on them. You can also use a little bit of sewer's aid on your needle. After you put your needle in place, you'll take sewer's aid, which is also available at sulky.com. This is a water-based lubricant for sewing applications. So it doesn't have any oily or greasy residue. It doesn't leave spots or marks. It is, you know, water-based. So keep that in mind. Don't be using it when you're sewing silks and things like that. But it's really great for um, even threading the needle. If you don't have an auto threading mechanism on your sewing machine and you always have to get out six pairs of readers like I do sometimes to just thread the needle in the sewing machine, this is really great. You can put a little drop, all you need is a tiny drop, rub it between your fingers, put it on the thread end, put it on the needle itself where the needle eye is, and then thread your needle. And you'll be amazed at how easy that is. But you can also just, you know, run it down the needle and then do your sew out and you won't have any stickiness. And probably one drop will get you through the entire stitch out because a little goes a long, long way. This is relatively inexpensive. Um, and I mean, I have two bottles. This is the one that's not even open yet. I've had this one for probably six months. I've used it several times. It looks full, just saying. A little goes a long way and it lasts a long time. Um, and it's a really great, uh, you know, help. All right, let's see. Oh, Erlene says, I got my mystery box when I was on vacation. Can't wait to start working on it. All right. Loved the mystery box. Um, we had our, our Christmas in July, holly jolly, merry and bright mystery box. Um, if you didn't grab one, be sure to be on the lookout for our next mystery box, which will um, be coming up soon. Um, at some point soon. <laughs> Glad to know you got one. All right. Rosemary says, do you recommend titanium needles? Um, so, you know, I, I use titanium needles for certain applications. I know some people don't like to use them at all um, because they're afraid that they might harm their machine or something like this. I've never had that happen. I use titanium needles when I'm working on very heavyweight fabrics and I'm using really heavyweight thread. I love to use titanium needles when I'm working with sulky filane thread using really textured, heavy brushed embroidery designs that have heavyweight thread and a lot of layers to get through. That titanium needle can just puncture through those layers, creating your stitches without breaking. And they're really, really great for those applications. I will say I don't use them much otherwise though. Um, 
mostly because I like to use different types of needles and our titanium needles only come in the top stitch variety. All right, let's see. I have 10 needles. Shall I change them all? Well, if you have a 10 needle machine, I'm less familiar with those if you have multi-needle machines um, with how often those needles need to be changed because what's happening in a multi-needle machine is your colors are all embroidering out at the same time, right? So uh, your needle is being used less because it's only stitching out one color. So you can probably get away with keeping those needles in your machine a lot longer than if you were stitching all 10 colors one at a time on a standard machine. So I would consult your manual or your manufacturer's website for their recommendations on how often to change those needles. Um, I'm just not as familiar with them, um, but probably not with every new project, just for the simple fact that one needle is operating one thread color um, and what have you. So it's doing a lot less stitches. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see. Jan says she needs a magnetic hoop. I am telling you, they are game changers for machine embroidery. Lots of people talking about how hot it is in their neck of the woods. I know it is. It's going to be a hot week here where I'm from, too. But uh, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. <laughs> Um, oh, Barbara, great tip. She says, I have used a Sharpie permanent ink pen to color the bobbin thread when I goof. That is a really great tip as well. And you know what? We actually have some embroidery markers that are basically specifically for that purpose. If you have a little bit of bobbin thread that's showing on the top, and you've spent three hours on a stitch out that has 60,000 stitches, something like that, and it's on a blank, you know, all these factors, you don't wanna toss it, right? Well, we've got these specialty markers at sulky.com where they come in lots of colors, where you can just kind of touch up paint, if you will, those little bobbin threads that you might see, um, you know, if your tension was a little off or, you know, something happened during your stitch out, and let me see what they're called because I can't remember right now. Uh, let's see. Um, yes, I'm not finding it, but hopefully I can find it for you here before we're done. Oh, maybe I need to look at pens. There we go. It's called the Zig Fabricolor Twin Embroidery Touch-Up Pens. It comes in 12 colors. These are actually on sale right now as well. So the, they retail for $53.99 and they're on sale for $40, bucks, $40.49. Um, let me see if I can bring up a picture of them really quick so you can see. The Zig Fabricolor markers. Let's see. And... It's not working. <laughs> Apologize if that just came up on the screen. Um, let me see what I can do here. <clears throat> Sometimes things just don't work out as, as much as I would love. Here on the so what? Um, let's see. Bear with me a moment. It's coming. It's coming. Here we go. The Zig Fabricolor Twin Markers. So let's see, it looks like they're dual sided, which is why they are twin, double ended water based pigment ink textile markers. They're permanent, acid free, and will not wash out. So one end of the marker has a tip for detailing and outlining, and the other end is a flexible brush tip for more complete coverage. So these are really great to have on hand if you do have, you know, those bobbin thread mishaps. You know, for my towel, I probably wouldn't color, you know, the entire back of this embroidery. I'm just going to wish that I had done it in black thread and leave it at that because it's just, that's a lot of marker to be adding to it. But, you know, 
whatever works, whatever works. All right. So thank you for that tip. That's a great idea. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I was laughing. Um, uh, Paula, she says, what? Anti-glue needles? I need those now. <laughs> Sulky carries all solutions. <laughs> Well, I'm super glad that you think so. I think so too. Just when I think like, oh man, I wish there was X, Y, Z. Then I go and I find it on the website and there you go. It already exists. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks everybody for all of your comments there. I just also wanted to mention that you know, I did say at the top of today's show that these are great tips and techniques for embroidering all sorts of different towels, toweling, robes, plushy items, and they are great, great tips for embroidering our embroider buddies. Who out there has tried an embroider buddy before? We have a ton of these on the Sulky website. Um, most often you'll see them as stuffed animals. And what makes an embroider buddy awesome is each part of the stuffed animal or stuffy, if you will, has its own little sort of pillow inside to create the stuffing. So for example, if you're embroidering the unicorn, the head will have its own pillow. The body has its own pillow. So you can open up the zipper, take out the pillow stuffing, and then flatten out the area for machine embroidery. I happen to have one in the unicorn right here. So this is an embroider buddy that's ready for personalizing a design, a monogram, what have you, right here on the belly. We have a lot of different stuffed animal types, but we also have these great sports motifs, which really goes with our theme for today. So if you have a little one or maybe even a not so little one, um, a coach, what have you, that's starting these great fall sports as we head back to school, you can grab up an embroider buddy. You can put the team name right on here. You can put a monogram, maybe the year, maybe the, the um, coach's name, what have you, right there on the basketball because you can zip this open, take the uh, stuffing pillow out, flatten it out, and embroider it just like you would a towel. Then when you're done, you know, and by that I mean you need your salvi topper because it's plushy, right? And all those good things. When you're done and you've washed away all of your stabilizer, you'll put your pillow stuffing back in, zip it up, and there you have it, a personalized little stuffy. And what I love about the sports team ones is they make great little travel pillows also. They're the perfect size for that, for, you know, airplane rides, car rides, stuff like that. So they're not just for kids. They make great gifts for, you know, older kids, kids at heart, things like that. We have this great basketball. We have a football um, and we have a baseball. Um, we have one of these pictured on our website that says something like, you know, Braden's first uh, baseball and it was gifted to a little newborn baby. How adorable. Love it. All right. So I just wanted to show you with my unicorn here how it works. And there are tutorials on this on our site as well. So you'll see the zipper for the animal goes all the way across, allowing you to really get in there and do your machine embroidery. So here's the body pillow. See how it's shaped just like the the body. And then here is the little pillow in the head. So you can take both of those out and then you can flatten out that body piece and attach it to your hooped stabilizer and add your embroidery design. Of course, you will add the topper as well. So again, lots of tutorials on how to embroider the embroider buddies on our website. Um, and it's a little bit easier to embroider those sports balls as well because they're just a little bit bigger. So once you open up that zipper, you have a lot of room to do a really cool, you know, team name, motif treatment, monogram, all of those great things that we like to add 
to personalize our project. So check out those embroider buddies, grab those golf or sports towels, and you'll have a lot to do if you've got a whole team or coach to personalize things for as we head back to all those great sports games coming up. All right, Sandra says, stuffies are the way to go for embroidery. So easy to do and impressive for the recipients. Yep, they're always like, how on earth did you do this? And you're like, I did it myself. Love that. <laughs> Patty says, I checked the site out and I have to have the little lamb. So cute. And yes, great for travel pillows again. Um, Betsy says, I've used several embroider buddies. So cute and easy to use. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, I hope that I've inspired you all today to create some sports themed mementos. Um, and, you know, if you're just embroidering towels, I hope that you uh, got some great tips and techniques for that as well. So we can all have success at our embroidery machines. Um, if you missed the top of today's show, I did talk about our great creative rope baskets embroidery sewing session, and this will be available for viewing on September 12th. So at that point, you can guide yourself through this sewing session. You can embroider a lot, a little, sew a lot, or a little, watch all the videos one at a time. You get the idea. Make sure to register to reserve your spot and grab up a kit because they are going fast and I want to make sure if you want a kit, you go ahead and get one because they're only $39.99 and you can create at least one, if not two, rope baskets using the materials in that kit. And once you register for the embroidery sewing session and all the videos drop on September 12th, you will be able to grab up the Vibrant Notions Wreath Machine Embroidery Design which is this really great sewing themed design that's perfect for your rope baskets, courtesy of Embroidery Library and Urban Threads. So be sure to register. I can't wait for you all to take the course and see all of your fabulous rope baskets and your take on that project. All right. Uh, Sue says, is there a time limit for the sewing session? Nope. Our sewing sessions are all on demand. So on September 12th, when everything's available and you've registered, you'll get an email saying the course is up, it's live, it's ready for you to experiment with. It's totally self-guided. So you can start and stop um, whenever you choose. And once it's in your library, it's there forever as well. So if you go ahead and register, but you're not ready to create your rope basket yet, you can come back when you're ready and watch any of those videos as a refresher as well. Um, if you know time passes and you wanna make another one, you can always access those videos because you purchased it and it's in your account at sewingonline.sulky.com. All right, Tina has a, Number five, grandbaby on the way. I hope that you make um, some really cute embroider buddies for that little guy or gal. That's exciting. All right. So if I haven't addressed your question and you need an answer to your project related, product related, or sewing, quilting, crafting uh, question, you can always email us as well at info at sulky.com. We are always here for you to help you have success at the sewing machine. And thanks for joining me on today's So What? And I'll see you next Tuesday.